Do you have a steel drum in the back? I do. I'm from Trinidad, bro. Play it. Are you happy now? So majestic. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, we've got Teddy Robinson Hi. here with us right now. Teddy Robinson played a very, very pivotal role in Tokyo Ronin 3. He's, um, he produced a lot of the beats on there. Is it two? I said three? Yeah, he said three. Man, I'm just, I'm just so excited. I saw Jesus in the background and I knew it was gonna be a good interview. <laughs> <laughs> Show the people Jesus. Jesus got your back, bro. Jesus is my homeboy. But have we talked about Kakuna as well? Like, I Whoa, Jesus. I think Jesus is a stronger Pokemon than Kakuna, to be honest. <laughs> I don't know who would win. I mean, Kakuna doesn't have any moves. It just does harden, right? So, anyway, I feel like that's some sort, somehow blasphemous. Can Jesus make you harden? Hey yo! No, focus, steady. <laughs> First question: Having mixed and mastered the project, what was the most difficult part about working on this project? You always like to record a low voice and a high voice. Uh huh. Like a hello, this is Gizmo, and a hello, this is Gizmo, <laughs> and then. And so it's like really hard. It's very niche and very specific, but that's like the mm -hmm. hardest part. Otherwise, it was, I think everything was pretty smooth. I think we worked together like really nice. We have a good vibe. Mm -hmm. And so, hmm, I don't know. I just feel like it, it was really, it was good. It was every time we do a project, I'm like, yes, I get some practice. So since you said we had a good vibe, I guess I'll just ask this question. What was your favorite memory of us working together on this project because you were actually the first person that I sat in the studio with and like recorded a, a project together. Usually I just record here, but um, what was your favorite uh, memory from the, us working together? It was you saying some dumb shit in the intro and then me wanting to keep it and you wanting to remove it. <laughs> I think every song on the project has a version where you say something really random in the intro and then I'm like laughing in the background and I'm like, we should keep that. And you're like, no, 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 I want to remove it. Funny thing is like, oh, on Zen Zen No Way when I did this, I did this, so, like some like yeah. random ad lib. Yeah. And I was like, no, nah, that's got to go. And y'all, nope, nope, we're keeping it. I was like, no, Teddy, that's got to go. Y'all, nope, we're keeping it. I was like, fine, let's keep it. And like now it's, it's charming, but I'm telling you, like the first month I listened to that album, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe this ad lib is in here. <laughs> he convinced me to keep it. Yeah, no, I'm very like, I love those, like, I live for those like random moments where you hear something you don't, you're not used to hearing. Yeah. And so when you make a random noise or you say something funny, like the, um, the Candace Owens diss, I think we oh, kept yeah, that part yeah, yeah. in like, I'm here, for real, I'm here to can diss and this is where the can gets dissed. Like that part was just so random and you said that out of nowhere. <laughs> and for me, that became like one of my favorite part of that song is just like you saying something so <laughs> out of the blue, out of nowhere. So the spontaneous moments, I think, were like really nice. I think that was like one of the nicest parts of like working together. Okay, uh, so for me personally, my, my one of my favorite moments um, working on this project when we're in the studio together is uh, you were playing me some tracks that uh, you haven't released yet. And there was a track with you and uh, Rissa, and she was like something about like Big Dick Teddy in my rib cage or something. And I was like, yo! <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, that's um, why I said like Big Dick Boy Energy Baby, like because I oh, just heard this song. I remember. And so yeah, I was yeah. like, Big Dick Boy Energy Baby. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite track on Tokyo Ronin? What's your favorite track? Oh, it's Meet Me in Osaka, hands down, easy. Really? Favorite song by far. Yeah, yeah. Favorite Gizmo song ever made. Why? Why? I think Meet Me in Osaka just has like a really good hook. Like I think you really, really outdid yourself on the hook. And I can't wait to hear more hooks like that by you. Because I think that was a really amazing hook. We'll, we'll see. That song is actually um a lot sing-songier than I'm comfortable with. And to be honest with you, there's... I had like a lot of skepticism about that song in particular because, you know, I'm not a singy mm. dude, so... Yeah, understandable me. you mentioned zen zen no way and i think you sent me um zen zen no way like way back like probably like three years ago or something and you actually had a verse yeah. on there and yeah i actually came in i was like like teddy's verse is dope and everything but i wanted to do it this way to kind of relate more to the project so i ended up not using your verse did that make you feel a kind of way i don't think my verse was that good Yo <laughs> I don't think I had a good verse, so it was fine. It was it was ready. It was ready for your. It was you could yeah with open arms it accepted you Gizmo on the beat like oh. yeah. 
I think my verse was just okay. Just okay. Do it again. The money is perfect. I'm out here to hurt it. She want me to beat it. I did it at service. I'm calling room service. I need me a bottle. I'm hitting the throttle again and again. Again and again and again. Woo! Again and again and again. Woo! Again and again and again. Woo! Again and again and again and again. I remember, I remember the day I recorded that verse. I was late for a date like a, a tinder not not even tinder date a date with someone that i had met like a long time ago i was it was like i was doing like 30 days of demos so i was like yeah. i have to record demos so i was like in in 10 minutes recording like a quick verse yeah and then going to the date and so the verse was just okay and the date was even worse so <laughs> which was um, a good date i think goes to your method in the studio how you record because you usually do a lot of um you go more with the vibe more with the energy what you want to say and i think working with you in the studio i actually experimented with that because the song that we did on no coming back we just freestyled there yeah. and that's that's not me i like you like to write like i can freestyle but i feel like when i freestyle there's not a lot of direction in what i'm i'm saying so that's why i like writing down what i say recording with you like when you did the freestyle thing on no coming back it was actually super fun we did that twice actually we did that for summertime sorrel too the yes. track that came out before yes like like i said i love when someone says something random that you don't expect mm -hmm. and when you when you write it down i i, I appreciate the art and that's that's hip-hop you know like mm -hmm. but for some reason when someone when someone just you force someone to just say something and they they say something that they low-key feel embarrassed about that's always mm -hmm. somehow the best bar to me like when it mm -hmm. just it sounds so random it's so genuine you know so mm. had we not done summertime sorrel i don't think i would have felt as comfortable freestyling with you because i saw mm. how amazingly that song came out just off the freestyles and then we got to work on the no coming back i was like all right i want to try that again and that came out really really good as well so those are my favorite yeah. sessions, I think, where something just feels like it, it, it dropped out of the air. And like, I think I think it, when you I think when you freestyle your bars, mm -hmm. you it goes so fast that you almost don't even internalize that you're the artist. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's the only time when you're able to listen to it as a listener, even though it's your music, because you just freestyle it. It just came out of your subconscious. Yeah. So it's not like if you intentionally write it, then you're like, OK, I wrote this. I edited this. Da, 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 da. But if you freestyle it, it happens so fast that you that you forget that you're the artist and you're mm -hmm. able to judge it the way you would any other artist. Word, so, word, word. For so, me, that's right. like, I'll forever be a punch-in king. That's that's my that's my whole vibe. I do want to mess with punching in more. Punching in, there is a unique flow that comes from freestyling. Uh, you, you, you're, yeah. I feel like you're more in tune with the beat. There's a flow that you can't really replicate from just writing down pen and pad. All right, so next question. This this one's gonna be a little bit more divisive, okay? Given the um, the cultural climate right now and politics and how the United States is, has an election coming up currently, even in different countries like in the Netherlands now, you're seeing people that are very divisive with American politics. I'm gonna ask you this and you need to answer this honestly. This November, when you have to vote, are you gonna vote for tacos or burritos? It's tacos or burritos, Teddy. That's it. It's always going to be burritos because burritos. I love a good breakfast burrito. Mmm. Damn. <laughs> I thought that was going to be a harder <laughs> question to answer. <laughs> uh, what would you closest compare Tokyo Ronin to? To? I think you have a more intimate knowledge of the album than anyone else besides myself would. So what would you closest compare it to? Like a really good... Um, a really good morning walk before you go into uh, uh, an important meeting. I don't need to explain it. You don't need to justify it. That is a fantastic answer, dog. You work out? Yes, I do. How often? Damn, who, who's conducting the interview here, Teddy? Who's conducting <laughs> the interview here, Teddy? <laughs> what did you learn about your craft or about yourself while working on this? I just learned to mix better because I think it required a lot of like I did a lot of mixing. I don't normally mix other people's beats because you used some beats that were not by me. Mm -hmm. And so I had to mix those with all the little tracks and everything. So it was a completely new experience for me to mix other people's beats 
and make that into a good song. Mm. Me, I, I know which I know which 808s I use, I know which sounds I use, so I know how to mix them together. But when it's another person's beat, it's like, oh, sh now I have to make sure I don't mess up their beat in yeah, this mix, yeah. you know what I mean? I have to do that justice. Mm. So that was the thing I learned about the craft. And the thing about the self is like, you're always going to have um, opinion differences in the studio. So no matter who you're in the studio with, um, they're never going to have the exact same background as you in mm. music. And so they have different um, different sounds and different phrases and different things give them, give them different feelings. Yeah. A bar or a cadence that I think is super cool, mm. someone else might associate with something really negative. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, and so it's, it's really hard. There, there is no right answer when you're in the studio together. Um, sometimes you can really very strongly feel that you like it a certain way and the other person yeah. doesn't. But no, 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 no answer is right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I would say like um, when it came to a drift, a drift, the final song, you said like you were like, yo, your lyrics are too wordy. And I was like, I was thinking about changing it. I was like, you no, know, I was in Trinidad when I wrote this. I had like a really special feeling while I mm. wrote that. I wanted to keep it in. And you're like, yeah, all right, I understand. But like at first you're like, yeah, this is too wordy. You should try to make it maybe a, a little bit more digestible, which is understandable. But I mm. was like, no, nah, I want, I want to keep, I want to keep it in. Dang, I didn't move the lamp. The lamp is over there. Man, anyway, <laughs> final question: If you could change anything about how we approach this project, or mixing, or mastering, or production, or anything, uh, what would you have done differently if you would do something differently? I mean, I don't want to talk about it because like, that's like, if I, anything I say is going to take away. Wrong. The answer is nothing. <laughs> the answer is nothing, Teddy. The answer is nothing. You're wrong. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Shout out to Teddy for um, the interview. If you want to find him, link to all the stuff down in the description down below. Be sure to check out Token Ronin 2 that is out now currently my best work to date honestly and uh yeah shout out teddy shout out everybody that worked on this project let me know what you thought about it down in the comments down below would you like to see more interview style videos like this let me know as well it's your boy gizmo i'm out peace